Hey everybody and welcome back to Smashified Trophies. Uh, I'm Chris and today with me I have Nathaniel Platier. Hello, hello. <laughs> I have uh, Sean Hicks. Hey. And I have Michael Fortman, aka Mr. Fluffy Fox or Fluffy Fox. Hey. Hey, the team's the team's here. Uh, welcome back to Smashified Trophies. We just uh, cut out a week or so ago with the the fabulous wart from Super Mario Bros. 2, and now we're back with another villain. Uh, this is Ganon, you know, Pig Ganon, classically known. Um, this interpretation is specifically from uh, The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, those classic 2D Zelda games. Uh, this incarnation in particular, the sculpt that you're seeing, uh, was actually done by a artist who's uh, guest appearing and was unable to have a microphone, uh, so uh, shout out to Gies, Gies. <laughs> sorry, he's from Germany. Uh, Gies, uh, aka his his Twitter handle is Revels, R E V V E L S. Uh, so give a shout out. We're giving a shout out to him because he did the bulk of the sculpt. And so we're just gonna talk about Ganon for the next however, however many moments <laughs> in his place. So I got fourteen uh, minutes. <laughs> yeah, fourteen minutes in. So good. What, did you guys like Ganon, man? I mean, what do you guys think? Zelda. I mean, Pig Ganon was fans? my favorite. Out of yeah. like, I've always liked Pig Ganon more than human Ganon. Yeah, he's, he was just always cooler. Plus, he had his like uh, trident, so that was always cool too. Yo, yeah. Remember the classic Zelda games where they were like actual, like people, and not just like anime dudes and ladies and. and <laughs> And, well, I like and you know, like, dudes. yeah, no, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's like Link was like a lived in, uh, a dude who who was from that time period, and Ganon was a thought out character, like a magic user or whatever, a dark magic user, you know, yeah. thief kind of guy, pig, pig humanoid, uh, guy who could never die, always got reincarnated or, or you know, revived one way or another, the evil power fighting for that Triforce, that important Triforce, you know. Zelda's yeah. changed a lot, guys. So it's yeah. good that we can look back at these classic. The, the Triforce designs. itself has changed a lot in this series. I mean, like, well, it used depends to be on like, what version. To yeah, it used to be, and also have to uh, consider the Zelda cartoon, which is not canon, obviously. But like uh, <laughs> having sentient Triforce pieces and all sorts of stuff like that <laughs> that could talk, all sorts of weird things in the series. Wait, wait, so wait! It, the Triforce could talk in that. Yeah. The Triforce yeah. of Wisdom and Power, and then... I don't <laughs> did, think it have ever... like, did it have, like, a face? No, what? no. Thankfully, it didn't have a face. <laughs> that would have been terrifying. <laughs> My God. Uh, but no, in the, in the cartoon series, it, it used to be that uh, the Super Mario Super Show, and then uh, this would play right directly after that, too. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, and the Triforce that. of Wisdom and Power would be able to talk and stuff like that, like an ethereal, <laughs> like, courage? psychic voice. Uh, uh -huh. He never saw the courage. That was like, not. A, it was like a. It okay. wasn't a real Triforce in well, that. Well, luckily it, it was like Ganon, discovered this, later or something. Luckily, this Ganon comes straight from a Link to the Past, and obviously yeah. with the new remake uh, back in like 2011 or so or 12, whenever it was, a Link Between Worlds came out, and that was actually the first 3D version of of this Ganon that was ever made. We referenced that pretty heavily uh, while while creating the turnaround and design for this. Um, just to give a little bit more about uh, Hiz, the guy who's doing this, um, he uh, actually works for Fangamer.net, uh, that awesome website. He created the uh, he created the vinyl figures for their um, what's that game called? Undertale. 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 <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> what's biggest brain fart. What's I've Undertale? What is Undertale? <laughs> uh, he made the Undertale vinyl figures, and so. Uh, cool so he actually saw our smash fire trophies and you know the flowey and, and songs and everything and reached out to us so that's how we got in contact with him and he's obviously a big zelda fan as anyone in the right mind is and so here we are with his version of ganon i wish that this version of ganon would have appeared you know in the latest games up up at any point you never see this version of pig ganon as like the main antagonist coming after you using magic and and the and the trident yeah. and fighting you like a link to the past that final boss fight for this ganon so hard, you know. You know, it felt like you couldn't even. I think you needed. Well, it was like a really cool boss fight too. Oh, yeah, it was well, wicked. It, there's just something about Pig Ganon that stands out more so than normal Ganon to me because it's the whole concept of like going not over your limit with power, but like being so consumed with the lust for power that it has its own form. 
And that's unique to Pig Ganon, that, like, Human Ganon is... He's, he's too humanized, like, uh, no pun intended. He has it? motives and stuff like that. He's but called Ganondorf when he's human? Uh, just to, well, just to call what? you I don't, I don't care. Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. But, Pig Ganon's but, always been way more terrifying. Yeah, this, this is just more like the embodiment yeah. of evil itself, where Ganon was just humanized. And he's still cool. Ganondorf was still cool, but this is just, like, on a different level as a kid. That's a separate you just, beast, man. You just look at him and you're, man, you're like, man, he's evil. Yeah, whereas, like, if you looked at a humanoid Ganondorf, there might be levels of connection there. Like, the Gerudos yeah. had a lot of character development in Breath of the Wild. And to like, think that like he Wind Waker Gerudo especially, was, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, and Wind Waker especially. You were like, I can get behind this guy's so motivation. Yeah. Whereas yeah. with this classic Ganon, he's literally just, like, evil incarnate here to kill everyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... I don't, know, I don't know if you played uh, A Link Between Worlds or not, if you beat it or not, but I... Towards the end, you do get to see Pig Ganon, and for a when I was first playing it, yeah, like for a second, I'm like sitting there, like, oh wow, we're actually gonna fight him? And, nope, nope. Uh, <laughs> spoiler alert. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that game had their own interpretation of of what Ganon should be. It's Yuga Pig Ganon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is not even the same. Well, I mean, if you if you if we're gonna spoil Breath of the Wild real quick, the end boss isn't exactly classic Ganon in, in any. You know any sort of sense of the word whatsoever it's completely off the wall different right. shooting from left field so that's why we felt a real urge to work on this trophy and we worked on this trophy and worked on it and made it uh, long before breath of the wild came out we just got yeah. lucky that they didn't actually go in this direction which is fine i mean breath of the wild is such a different game in general but for many of the other you know mm -hmm. zelda platformers but but yeah Ganon's awesome, yeah. and the thing that's awesome about Keys is that he used to be a animation uh, professional animator, and so he, <laughs> and so you can just tell from the pose, this is a really wild pose, I was like, I said, uh, I was his art director on this one, I said to him, like, make it just as crazy as you can, because Ganon's a big guy, he's a hefty guy, got this huge core, these tiny little, you know, pig hooves, but let's make, let's give him action, let's have him running and like coming straight toward, towards you or something, <laughs> you know, you don't see a lot of that. And, and these bigger guys, but he's muscle. You know, he's not just fat. Like, Pig Ganon's fat, but he's got a lot of muscle, have hefty muscle on there. So, like, have him coming right at us. <laughs> and he did a stellar job on it, man. I love this pose so much. And it's interesting to see because uh, he didn't even have a rig to work with. Oh, he's just, yeah. he's just he's helping away. He's just got this super computer yeah. where, like, this, this models, like, an amazing amount of millions of polygons <laughs> <laughs> collective. <laughs> Yeah. And so it, this is seemingly impossible on most computers like yours and mine, but he's got this souped up uh, supercomputer. So yeah, uh, everything detail, was literally just and detail. like, yeah, we didn't have to UV unwrap or anything for this character. We just went super high definition. Like those fingernails are probably more detailed than your war trophy. <laughs> <laughs> probably. <laughs> it's insane, but it's true. Uh, especially since you went low poly at the end to help with the posing process. He just went full high def let's move it around <laughs> andrew was joking around he's like i think this is a little a little too good to be smashed by a trophy <laughs> uh, but no nah, detail doesn't change the fact that it, that it can fit into the style and we thought it fit it pretty well uh what's you guys' favorite zelda game of all time oh you guys already know mine so. uh, yeah it's a uh, link cdi right that one oh yeah definitely, definitely. <laughs> totally not Great. minish cap oh, i'll okay. get my stuff yeah, no, he likes minish cap i'm a big fan of twilight princess uh, uh, but aside from that probably the oracle of ages and seasons were my mm -hmm. second favorites mm -hmm. I, I consider them the same game to be honest yeah, no. yeah they're the they were the first zelda game uh for the game boy that i played same, same. sean um i'm torn because like i really like breath of the wild but also like it's uh, fresh when you gotta let it sit for a couple more months years you know yeah I'll Maybe see what something. happens with the DLC and everything see if it uh yeah, see if it ruins the game for you or makes it <laughs> yeah I feel like well I feel like that's the thing too is like my enjoyment of Breath of the Wild is probably gonna largely depend on whether or not this second DLC is really good cause from what I'm hearing it's gonna take place like right after the main game so it's gonna really hopefully bring some things together with the what was really left out of the story of this Breath of the Wild? So yeah, yeah you had to you had to take a step back and look at it as a whole when it's like actually completed, when everything's finished right. with it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. 
ho hopefully it'll be something to be impressed by <laughs> more so than ever. <laughs> hopefully it doesn't take it down a notch. Yeah, but, hopefully. But yeah, no, I think, uh, and we've talked about this a lot. <laughs> as retro gamers, as people like us who grew up with these games, all we really want is just like, HD remasters of those classic games because nothing's gonna ever beat those in our minds, you know? And there's that great original memory uh, that you hold dear near to your heart that's like, oh, this game, you know, when I was a kid, a uh, Link to the Past was like real and I was living in those towns. It's like, imagine if they brought a Link to the Past to like the Switch on like a 3D, uh, you know, move around, just gorgeous lighting, Ooh. you know, Mario Kart 8 style. I mean, that's, yeah. that's like what all retro gamers want, right? I mean, now they've got this beautiful Breath of the Wild engine. They could they could try to port it over. I don't know, man. It'd be cool to see. And I think one of the biggest flaws in uh, Breath of the Wild in general was just that there weren't a lot of enemies and enemy designs. And I would have really appreciated something like this in the game, to be honest with you. Well, there were a lot of enemies, just not a lot of enemy variety, really. <laughs> yeah. You just kept seeing the same book goblin, the same, <laughs> yeah. and then sometimes a Lionel, you know, sprinkled out, yeah. out like, yeah. in the main area. Yeah. No, it's a great game. It along. was cool seeing the Lionel for the first time oh, yeah. in like a 3D representation. Yeah, that was yeah, really yeah. awesome. I was really pushing for that horse head. I'm a big fan. Ganon's one of those classic uh, Zelda enemies I love, but a horse head is up there too. It doesn't get enough love, man. First enemy from yeah. uh, Link's adventure. <laughs> first boss. Oh, man. Good stuff. I, I still speaking of Link's Adventure and stuff like that. That weird looking like, what's that? What's that uh, like black orb creature that has like a tail that would always like push you off? Is it a hunter? I don't know. Uh, do do you know what I'm talking about? Um, it's it starts with an M. It's more more. more I was gonna say Morpheus. Morpheus. <laughs> the red pill or the blue pill? <laughs> I'll figure it out and then I'll push it in the comments or something. Uh, that's fine. Uh, Moldor. Moldor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Something, Moldor. something like that. Okay. So, Daniel, uh, talk about the flipping music, man. Yeah, I had a lot of fun with this. Uh, it. Some people know this, obviously, but a lot of people surprisingly don't. The beginning of the song with the piano and stuff like that is actually a reference to, uh, Ocarina of Time's like boss theme. The da 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 da, and then they mm -hmm. used that, and I that was. It was really creative for the composer to do that, so I, I really, really loved working on this song. And I, I wanted to slow it down a bit because it felt a little bit too fast. And it kind of, like you, you couldn't really take in the details of it. It just felt like a, put it on 1.2 <laughs> speed and like just throw it out there. So I wanted to like savor like the really cool ethnic instruments and stuff in it, so. Mm -hmm. And make it sound like sinister as much as I could. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the main songs that you're referencing are This is the Blight Ganon theme from Breath of the Wild. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And that, as you're saying, is, is built off of on classic Zelda songs, just as most songs are in Breath of the Wild. It's great to hear almost a completely different rendition of these older, like Ocarina of Time remixes and such. It's great just being in the over. Uh, the fields of Hyrule and riding your horse and like maybe hearing like a Zelda's lullaby or something like that briefly. I, I, I will say that I was, I love what they did with the music and stuff for the most part, but it felt like the entire OST of Breath of the Wild was just remixes of other songs. So there wasn't much new things for composers to be like, oh, I'm going to do this remix. Because it would just be a remix of a previously <laughs> made song. Yeah, I mean, it so. makes somewhat sense with the, uh, the general direction of the game because it's like this aftermath, you know, apocalyptic <laughs> I rule yeah. after the war and Zell and, and Ganon's take over and his moblins and bacoblins and everything are are just running loose and wild. And so there's very little remnants of the classic, you know, sort of uh, societal uh, side of Hyrule, uh, which kind of lends itself to that. Uh, but yeah, man, this this freaking trophy came out so good. It's it's amazing. It, it's, it's probably one of the most dynamic posed ones that we've yeah. that I've seen us do. It, it looks yeah. so great. Yeah. Everyone did so good on it. These are great. And then I cleaned up the sculpt a bit and added in the materials here, most of them a bit, and they just kind of came together so quickly because uh, Ganon's got only a couple different colors to him. There he is now. Look at that trophy. This guy is hey, this guy is, he is, is the king of evil. Man, he's great. hashtag bring back Ooh. Ganon. Bring 2017. Back he needs to come back. Wouldn't you want to see this in a game? I know I would. I would. Uh, I want him. I want Ganon and Smash that does magic, and <laughs> not <laughs> Captain 
Falcon ripoff. <laughs> yeah, imagine this guy in Smash. I mean, even as a trophy, it's great. So yeah. Anyway, uh, thanks, uh, Thaniel, Sean, and, and Mike for coming over and, and being in this commentary. As always, uh, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, feel free to comment and subscribe below, and uh, check out. Feel free to check out our Patreon. Uh, we've got this new end credit slate where our Patreon uh, supporters are right here, listed in credit form. So if you ever wanted to get your names in the credits of a Smash Fight video, uh, this is your chance. Go over to patreoncom smashfight. You can also check out uh, gumroadcom smashfight. You can get our brushes and models and such over there. Uh, but yeah, thanks again. Check out Geese. It's underscore Revels underscore at on, on Twitter. Uh, he does great art. And yeah, check him out. Thanks, everybody. And see you next time.